What's going on guys? Today I've got the underused ladder tour game between Hog and Tumu as Hog is choosing to bring the solid looking Volturn offense team featuring Mega Beedrill and Magneton with Slurpuff as probably a cleaner and Seismitoad as his choice of a stealth rocker. Um, and Tumu chooses to bring this really weird looking semi-stall team with Togetic. Really interesting choice on his part. So Hog is going to open up with his Magneton figuring he can Volt switch out on almost anything on Tumu's team as Tumu chooses to bring Roserade. Um, he's going to reveal Black Sludge here, which means he's more than likely defensive. As Hog is just going to sack his Crobat to the sleep, as Roserade is just going to take advantage of that and um, go for Leech Seed on the switch. So Hog pretty much gets a free Mega Evolution here and um, does a decent chunk to the Alomomola as he's just going to go right back into Magneton and continue. Just Volt Switching and U-Turning out. Unfortunately, in the end, it's not going to wear down Tumu's team too much just because he does have Regenerator on that Olomomola. So, Beedrill is hardly going to be doing enough to it with the leftovers to um, to really dent it with U-Turn. So, he's going to... So, because of the leftovers on the Olomomola, he's going to go for Knockoff this time as Tumu predicts that, I guess, and goes into his Aerodactyl. Figuring he can take any hit, as he's just going to get a free Mega Evolution off as Hog is going to retaliate with the U-Turn as Aerodactyl just goes for Roost. Now, Hog makes a good play here by scouting for the Earthquake, which tells us two things. One, that this thing is not Choice Scarf, and even if it was, I actually don't think it outspeeds Mega Aerodactyl. I think Aerodactyl outspeeds like everything up to base 80 Scarf. Um, so whether it was Scarf or not, Hog made the, made the good play of scouting for Earthquake by going into his Seismitoad. And now the two are just pretty much going to exchange their rocks here. As, um, they're really going to be helping Hog out because of his Volt Turning Core. As he just makes the safe, as Tumu makes the safe switch into Rose, uh, Roserade. As Hog makes a good play also by going for the knockoff, expecting that. So it's pretty much a, a free switch in for Hydreigon here. Because even if he goes for Sludge Bomb, it's defensive, so it's not going to be doing too much. As here, um, Hog is going to reveal that his Hydreigon is Choice Scarf by going for U-Turn, which allows him to bring in Magneton for free to just go for another Volt Switch. As uh, Tumi is just going to go for Protect here just to get some leftovers recovery, which is why Hog wanted to knock those off in the first place. And here, Tumi gets, I, I guess, a questionable play. I guess he figured that... Um, the only way that he was not going to get worn down. Now that Stealth Rocks are up on his side, um, he had to do something. But I'm not sure staying with Alomomola was the exactly the best play. Especially because Hog has a number of switch-ins to it, being uh, Seismitoad and Hydreigon specifically. So Hog is just going to go into his Seismitoad expecting a Scald. But he actually reveals the Mirror Coat, so that's why Tumu stayed in with Alomomola. And uh, Seismit Seismitoad was a really important member of Hog's team since it's one of the things keeping Aerodactyl from just going wild on this man's team, especially because he has Earthquake for Magneton, so not even that stops it. So, uh, and Tumio took advantage of the fact that every single one of his team members were pretty vital. Um, if I were Hog, I mean, actually, I really couldn't have seen the Miracle coming. Um, it's probably because I play OU more often, but I would have at least gone into Crobat to scout for that, but... Um, Someone who's purely playing in UU will not have known about um, the Mirror Mola thing that was around in OU for a little while, but um, unfortunately Hog's gonna lose his Seismitoad and he's just forced to go back into his Magneton as uh, Tumu's probably playing the switch out at this point, so he's just gonna get a little bit of leftovers recovery so he can get uh, the most out of Regenerator. As here he's just gonna switch in his Roserade, uh, basically sacking it because Hog is just gonna go back into Hydreigon and anything at this point will knock it out. As uh, he goes for the safe Dark Pulse, as now this allows Tumu to get in his Heracross, which is in fact going to reveal itself to be um, Toxic Orb, or is it Flame Orb? Yeah, it's Toxic Orb, as he uh, just sacks Crobat at this point, because Tumu is just going to be go gonna be able to go straight for Facade. As now Hawk can go into his Beedrill to start wearing this um, Heracross down, but he actually goes for Poison Jab. I don't know if I agree with that. Um, especially because this the blade could very well have Shadow Sneak. In fact, if it did have Shadow Sneak, this game would have been over. Um, because then I think Beedrill would have gone down to the next. Oh yeah, and which leads to the next. I guess Hog was just confident that this thing was Rest Talk and wouldn't have Shadow Sneak because if the blade had Shadow Sneak here and it, it had gone for it on U-turn, then Beedrill would most likely die to the next switch in of Stealth Rocks. 
So I think Hog took a really unnecessary risk by going for U-turn. And Toomey really should have had Shadow Snake. Like, I know the Rest Talk set doesn't run it because it doesn't get priority while he's asleep. But he has one of the best Wish Passers in the game, so... Kind of a choke on both parts. Toomey for not running Swords Dance, um, just to add a little bit more offense to his team. And Hog for taking the unnecessary risk and going for U-turn. Um, so it's going to allow Hawk to go back into his Hydreigon as the blade reveals that it has Shadow Claw. And uh, now Hydreigon is just going to be able to fire off a free attack. Um, although, Toomey does have a pretty decent switch in in Togetic, which is going to take the Fire Blast relatively well. As now, uh, Togetic is going to be able to go for the Seismic Toss as he just sacks it to the Magneton. Uh, I don't know... I guess he figured he didn't need it because Hydreigon was so low. As Hydreigon's unfortunately going to miss this Fire Blast, which is going to enable Heracross to just go for the um, the Facade here. As he's pretty much forcing the Beedrill here, and uh, he can just go for... Actually, goes for Knockoff at this point. Maybe expecting the Blade once again. Uh, so he just goes for the Double Knockoff, knocking out Olomola. As now... Oh my god. He goes for Protect here. And so the game's pretty much over because Aerodactyl wins. Except we reveal here that it's Adamant. Either that, or it's not running enough speed to outspeed, but why? To okay, I know this is a tournament, and this is where people get the chance to innovate, you know, he's at the Togetic, uh, Hog has this, but why run Adamant Aerodactyl? Because you're gonna see later, this just loses it in the game, because, um... So he goes, he goes on the slurp up here on the Earthquake, and, uh, Toomey is gonna be able to make the safe switch into the Blade, and, uh, Hog has no choice but to just sack the Slurp up for mate just to get off as much damage as possible. Because his only two Pokemon left are gonna be his Magneton and his Beedrill. So once he gets enough damage, enough chip damage on the blade, uh Magneton's not gonna have any switch in, so this next turn he's just gonna sack Slurpuff because it is pretty much useless with the blade on his team, and he's gonna be able to to take out his the blade, as Toomey pretty much had no choice but to sack it. And then, he, Hog gets lucky here because you're going to see he gets the crit with Poison Jab, and that's going to be enough to take down Aerodactyl. So Hog got lucky, but if Toomey had just been running Jolly on his Aerodactyl, like what extra KOs do you get with Adamant? What lives do you hit with the HP investment? <sighs> Man, so yes, Hog got lucky, but... If Toomey had been running Adamant, he, I mean, he, if he had been running Jolly, he wouldn't have even had the chance. So, <laughs> so now Hog pretty much just wins because Heracross is in range of Poison Jab, and uh, Hog wins the game by a hair. So, like Toomey definitely could have won this game if he had. First of all, if he had Shadow Sneak on his, if this was like a, like a more offensive, and also he wasn't running Iron Head either. He was going for Shadow Claw on that on that Slurpuff. Or, like, he didn't even have Gyro Ball or anything like that, so he had a, a the Blade that didn't have... I guess maybe it had, like, Toxic or Sacred Sword? I don't know what else he could have. It didn't have Shadow Sneak or a Steel Stab, so... I don't know what kind of the Blade that was, um... And I don't know what he was... I don't know why he was running Rest Talk when he has a freaking Oloma Mola to, to pass Wishes for it. And since Hog took that risk and went for U-Turn on it, if he had Shadow Sneak, then this Beedrill would have not been able to come in on Hazards. And then the the Aerodactyl that's slower than Beedrill, so Toomey definitely had this game, but it's just <laughs> mistakes like that that cost him in the end. So that was game one. So this is going to be game three between Hog and Toomey, and both of them have pretty stally looking teams with uh, Toomey bringing almost the exact same team, and Hog has a, a Shedinja. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a pretty interesting choice. Uh, Hog is going to lead off Aerodactyl as Toomey brings out his Amoongus. Hog is going to take this opportunity to Mega Evolve and go for Taunt, just so uh, Toomey can't go for Spore, but he doesn't stay in. He goes straight to Olomola as this enables Hog to go into his Pharaoh Seed and get up uh, uh, free rocks here, basically. As for some reason, Olomola is staying in. Like, obviously, he's fishing for the Skull Burn, but Hog is a really reliable Aromatherapy user, which um, can get up the Aromatherapy off off on his Togetic and also to a lesser extent his Heracross. So I don't know why Tumiu lets Ferroseed stay in here to uh, set up the spike because that's really gonna kill him later on. Um, 
So here Hog is going to decide to switch out, uh, probably assuming that Toomey would not stay in either. And um, if you guys don't know, the second spike isn't actually as effective as the first or the third. So Hog pretty much just figured he would lay up one spike and that should be enough and then just switch out. So he switches, switches out in the Q realm just to pressure the Togetic and the Aerodactyl, his two possible defoggers, most likely Togetic. As he gets it right, and he's able to just go for a substitute here as, um... Actually, no, he just goes for, straight for the Ice Beam, which is the safer play on his part, as unfortunately, Aluma Mola gets frozen, and now, um, Kyurem's gonna go for substitute. Um, so the freeze doesn't matter there, because Scald automatically thaws, but it's no, it's gonna come nowhere near to breaking the substitute. As now, um, Kyurem reveals Dragon Tail, so it's most likely, like, sub Roost Dragon Tail Ice Beam. As, um... Kiram's going to be able to pseudo-haze out anything that Alomomola wants to wish pass to. So it's pretty solid. It's a, Hog's in a pretty solid position. But unfortunately, he's not going to be able to wear down the Alomomola too much because it does have Regenerator. And uh, so the hazards aren't really biting Tumu that much yet because uh, Alomomola can just... Okay, that freeze kind of mattered there. Um, because this Distal Blade could have had some kind of Steel Stab or really any attack would have broken uh, Kyurem substitute, especially after taking the Scald. So uh, that's pretty unfortunate for uh, Tumu. But um, once Tumu manages to go back into Alomomola, it's pretty much just going to be able to uh, wish pass. And along with Regenerator, the hazards aren't going, to be doing, aren't going to be doing too much damage yet. So I actually don't know how much of this is skipped because eventually Hog is going to realize that this is not going to get him much of anywhere. And, uh, so, okay, so Kiram's actually faster than this Heracross. Um, but yeah, so... So Hog could have eased... Since we, we found out that it's faster, Hog could have easily just stolen this uh, Heracross out of Substitute to the point where the Toxic Damage brings it in range of Ice Beam. So Tumu obviously doesn't want, doesn't want to mess around with any of that and just go straight back into Olomomola as um, Hog is just going to be able to go for another Substitute. Alright, so I'll skip some of that because this just goes on for a few more turns where Hog is just dragon tailing and ice beaming and Tumu is just going for Wish and um, getting dragon tailed out of his old Momola. So nothing really happens. Hog finally decides that it's not going to get him anywhere and he decides to switch his Kiram out into his Pharaoh Seed to uh, face Ola Momola. And this time he's going to go for, an, uh, he's going to double switch back into Kiram expecting him to want to go into his Togetic probably to uh, default away his hazard because if if Hog manages to get all three la layers of his spike up, then it's going to be looking pretty grim for Tumu. So that's probably why he pulled the switch into Kiram, and uh, he doesn't want him passing to Togetic, so he's, so go staying in and going for Ice Beam was a pretty decent play, as unfortunately Alomomola gets the Toxic off on Kiram. Um, however, Hog does have Floor just to just um, use Aromatherapy, so that's not too problematic. As now Hog is just going to switch straight out into Florges actually, and here Hog makes an excellent play. Instead of going for the Aromatherapy, first he goes for the Moonblast and knocks out two Mew's Defogger, so now that's really unfortunate. So while uh, Hog is going to decide to just use Aromatherapy and sack his Florges to the sleep, which is, I guess is a, is a decent play, as now he can just call back his Florges and go into Pharaoh Seed. As Tumu decides to go out into his Aerodactyl, get um, Mega Evolution off and go for the Stealth Rock, so this is likely the same AIDS Aerodactyl as last time with uh... I, I, I still am, am confused about that. So basically Ferrothy is going to get up another spike, so that's going to be the third spike. So now that Tumu has lost his um, Defogger, things are going to be looking really grim. So um, Hog decides to switch out there to maybe suffer the HP Fire. I actually don't know if that's exactly what he was thinking, but it works out for him because um, his Amoongus is running HP Fire, which I guess makes sense looking at to the, the makeup of Tumu's team. The only thing he really has to touch Fortress is his his Heracross, and that's kind of shaky at best. So I guess it's I guess it makes sense that Amoongus has Hidden Power Fire on this particular team for a tournament. And uh, apparently Hog had the same thinking as uh, he's just going to be able to bring in his Tender Cruel and get a free Rapid Spin off. As Amoongus just tries to get a little bit of damage and go for the um, Giga Drain. So now <laughs> these um, 
So now these spikes and Stealth Arc are really going to be problematic, especially because Tentacruel goes with a knockoff and knocks off Lola Mola's leftover, so that's really devastating for Tumio. So around this time of the battle when I was watching it for the first time, and if you'd gotten that burn there, that would have sucked. Um, I really just don't see how Tomb you can win this at this at this point with so many hazards up. Like yeah, he's gonna get the wish pass with um, Heracross, which is honestly his only way of winning at this point. As um, here, Hog decides to go into his Pharisee, perhaps sacking it just to get off a little bit of Iron Barb's damage uh, for Kyurem, because that's probably what he might go into next. But he lives; he doesn't go for close combat so, or yeah, so he just goes with the protect to stall out a little bit uh, the Toxic Orb, as now he's just going to take this opportunity to go for Leech Seed, expecting the Oloa Mola switch, and now he's basically a free switch back into Kiram because he's definitely not going for Scald, he's definitely going for Wish, as uh, now Kiram basically gets a free Ice Beam off on whatever comes in, um, but he actually makes the, I don't know if he should have gone for Substitute there, especially because the Blade was frozen, because uh, the other three Pokemon that he could have Wish Passed into died to Spikes and Stealth, Rock. Well, but he, they died to Ice Beam after Spikes and Stealth Rock, so... And the Blade is frozen, so... I'm not sure if Hog should have taken the risk of him Wish Passing into, like, hit the Heracross and forcing him out. I really think he should have gone for Ice Beam. But I guess it works out for him because, um... Tumu actually goes into the Blade as, um... Kiram's gonna be able to stay in, uh, take the Shadow Claw as Hog actually goes for Dragon Tail. Which of course has um, negative priority. So he's gonna be forced out into his Amoongus and obviously forced to switch out as um, Kiram actually goes for another substitute here. Um, again, I think I would have just gone for Ice Beam, but as he does so this turn. But um, Aerodactyl is just gonna be able to go for Roost repeatedly as he misses Dragon Tail. Um, that actually works out a little bit better for him because now Aerodactyl can't Roost and get rid of its flying type. But judging by the damage that Kiram did with Ice Beam, this Aerodactyl um, is running quite a bit of bulk. And even at even with the flying typing, Ice Beam is not going to be able to KO it as you're going to see here in a minute. As uh, Aerodactyl decides it wants to break the substitute and Ice Beam doesn't even come close to killing. Um, so I don't think that's a role as now he's just gonna be able to roost up as Kiram takes this opportunity to go for the substitute and attempt to go for Dragon Tail once again as he does so in this turn and um, I guess unfortunately it's a crit. It's kind of annoying but not gonna matter too much as this is a long battle. He just goes back into the blade as Hog figures that um, Pharaoh Seed's a safe switch in for the Iron Barb's damage as now he's just gonna pull the double into his Tentacruel. Um, probably not wanting this thing to, to set up and uh, wanting to knock off its Eviolite, so Shadow Claw does a real chunk to Tentacruel, as now he's just gonna be able to go for the Scald, and uh, he has Swords Dance, he does- wait... <sighs> does Tumi just hate Shadow Snake on the blade? That, that was a Swords Dance set, that was not a- that was not a- um... So considering this is the almost the exact same team, I mean, and he's probably running- yeah, this is the same Heracross, same Toxic Orb, it's probably like the same Togetic, what was the other Pokemon? Um, it's the same Aerodactyl too. So this was a Swords Dance of the Blade, and it didn't have Shadow Sneak. That would have. <sighs> okay, I don't. I'm not gonna fault him too much for that one because perhaps he he had no reason not to go for Shadow Sneak because Hog choked there and went for U-turn. He should have taken advantage of that. Like th he had, and then he switched into. There was no reason to use Shadow Claw. And. <laughs> And here he reveals he doesn't have Shadow Sneak at all because he would have used it. Oh my god, I, I'm sorry guys, I just can't get over that first game. <laughs> I'm not I'm not saying anything anything bad about Hog, but Team U should have won and he choked on Dick. But okay, we're past that. So he's, he just goes into his Heracross after this aids the blade without Shadow Sneak goes down. And just goes for the free close combat, taking out Pharaoh Seed, but unfortunately he's going to take all of that... Uh, all of that uh, Iron Barb's damage, and with the Toxic, it's going to be able to bring down his uh, Heracross. And now, uh, neither of these Aerodactyls have Stone Edge. Um, I guess, like, what, what do they have? Like, Stealth Rock, Taunt Roost? Uh, no, no, this one has Taunt. I think Tumu's just has Stealth Rock. 
which is going to cause Hog to take the game because Hog can go for Taunt to prevent Aerodactyl from going for Roost. So it's basically it's a it's an Aerial Ace War. Well, actually, Hog has Wing Attack. I guess maybe because it has more power points. So um, I guess that's that's okay. So it's basically just gonna be a Wing Attack Aerial Ace War, and Hog's gonna win it because because um, Two Mew's Aerodactyl can't go for Roost, and uh, it seems that. Oh yeah, um, Hog's Aerodactyl is faster, of course, because this Aerodactyl is 8. But um, nevertheless, Two Mew is going to make an excellent play by predicting his Roost there and going for Earthquake, knocking it out. As um, Hog's basically just going to be forced into his Kiram because his Aerodactyl doesn't have Stone Edge. And uh, Kiram is at, at half, and Kiram is really bulky, so it can definitely live in Aerial Lake. So basically, Two Mew is forced out here into his Alomomola, which is taking all of that Spikes damage. And... Um, it's just gonna be, this is gonna die to an ice beam, so it's pretty much game here because Aerodactyl can't knock out uh, Kiram at this range, and um, Kiram can just go for the substitute, and it's pretty much a kind of a stall war. Although if um, Tumu does manage to bring down this Aerodactyl, it's yeah, if he managed to bring that bring down the Aerodactyl, then he could have potentially won. Because Florch was asleep, Tenorcrow was at like 38%, and then Shedinja, <laughs> which dies to Stealth Rock, so, um, but I guess Toomew got impatient, and eventually he just decides to give up and not go for Roost, which, uh, when does that happen? Oh yeah, right here he just goes for Aerial Ace, breaks the sub, and then, uh, Ice Beam was going to be able to take it out. Um, I don't know if Ice Beam before was a roll, because if it was a roll, then eventually... Uh, Hog would have gotten it, and he would just would have just won anyway. But if it wasn't a roll, then I don't really know if Tumu. Well, actually, Kiram Kiram has pressure, so it doesn't matter. I was um I was gonna say it was a choke for Tumu to give up there when he had a chance to win, but he didn't because Kiram has pressure. I guess maybe that's why Hog has <laughs> Hog has Aerial Ace on his on his Aerodactyl. Maybe just being self conscious of the fact that he's running pressure on his team. So I guess that's pretty funny, so that was that's gonna be the match. So despite Hog having to throw a game because of an illegal Pokemon, uh, Sheer Force Gator, which is now released and uh, legal this round, um, he's gonna be able to take it anyway because Two Mew choked on Dicks with his Aerodactyl in the first game. And also his the Blade, which which most likely was the SD set in the first game as well, and it didn't have Shadow Sneak. Why would you oh, okay, okay, I'm done guys. I <laughs> hope you enjoyed the video. Go ahead and like and subscribe.